What's up everybody, my name's Jan, so today we're hopping back into Standard, this time with a card that I hadn't thought about or seen in a really long time, and that's going to be Lumbering Battlement. So uh, before we go and hop into this deck tech or deck breakdown, I would like to remind everybody if you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you enjoy the video, please leave a like down below, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down in the comment section below. Um, if you're looking to support the channel through a monetary means you can hit the join button down below the video and if you're looking to support the channel while picking up some magic cards you can head over to tcgplayer.com and use the promo code the new arch silicon now all that out of the way let's hop into what we are actually playing here today <clears throat> i did not mean for that to rhyme anyways um so yeah lumbering battlement this card has has kind of evaded my sights and evaded my decks for literally ever i've never made a lumbering battlement deck until today so uh yeah i figured with the great hinge lumbering battlement some of these new cards such as realm cloak giant it's actually really really good and i'll explain more about that um as we get into this so kicking us off we have four copies of gilded goose which is going to allow us to ramp get food if we need life all that wonderful stuff charming prince is going to allow us to scry or gain life or exile a creature so that way we may play it back down which comes in handy if you're looking at things such as Tulsimir or Night of Autumn um, <clears throat> Thorn Mammoth is pretty good about that as well so yeah uh, Charming Prince is okay and that's why we do only have two copies of them Growth Chamber Guardian I would recommend four copies if you have them I don't and I'm not gonna pick them up for uh, for a rare wild card considering next month we have uh, the next set dropping so yeah, not, mm -mm, you know, not uh, not going to be doing that. But it, again, if you have four copies, this is fantastic as they can get out more of themselves, which gives you more targets for Lumbering Battlement. So what does Lumbering Battlement actually do? Now that we're into talking about Growth Chamber Guardian and we'll get down to Battalion Foot Soldier in a minute. Lumbering Battlement, whenever it enters the battlefield, you exile any number of other non-token Okay, it does have to be non-token creatures you control until it leaves the battlefield. Lumbering Battlement gets plus two, plus two for each card exiled this way. Starts out as a four or five, and it has vigilance for five mana. So imagine this: you get down your Growth Chamber Guardian, you get down another one, whatever you know, however many you have. Uh, Battalion Foot Soldier works in a very, very similar manner, except we don't have to adapt it. As soon as it enters the battlefield, we can search and find the other three copies of Battalion Foot Soldier, which is really, really great for things such as the Great Hinge, Thorn Mammoth, uh, and Lumbering Battlement. And if you want to play more copies of Thorn Mammoth, by all means, you know, throw in two copies. Um, I simply only have one copy, and again, I'm not spending a rare wild card. I'm not spending a mythic on a Realm Cloak Giant um, because we have a new set coming out, and that's just how I roll. So, Lumbering Battlement, going to be picking up all these uh, other cards. It's also really good once you get ramped right and you're into that late game where you don't really need those mana creatures anymore. You can also pick up your Incubation Druids, your Leafkins, your Gilded Goose, Geese, I guess, whatever. <laughs> um, and uh, build the Lumbering Battlement even that much more. So he's going to be able to come down very huge. Say you have a Great Hinge, add another counter to however big he's already going to be, and it has Vigilance. Then you use things such as Thorn Mammoth. You can also throw in, if you want, and this is again at your own discretion, you could throw in things such as uh, End Race, right, instead of Thorn Mammoth, if you want some way to give your Lumbering Battlement uh, Trample. You could throw in Ronos, which doubles you know, the power and toughness for one turn and gives it vigilance, which it already has vigilance, so eh. Uh, you can throw in, there's another mammoth, and I cannot think of the name, aggressive mammoth. You can throw an aggressive mammoth and give all your creatures trample as well, and it is only six mana. So again, if you can play with these top end creatures a little bit to figure out really where you want the deck to be, but my main interest and my main focus was the lumbering battlement and building it up not so much how it's going to finish, right? So my, I, I get it, I get very tunnel vision, but uh, again, I'm, I'm still working and playing with this deck, but honestly, it's working very, very well so far. So, moving us down from the Growth Chamber Guardian, we just have some ramp here in the Incubation Druid and the Leafkin. Um, I'm, I, the reason I have two and two is because I'm trying to figure out which one I like better. Leafkin is obviously better in the early game because it doesn't get shocked out as easily, right? or disfigured or whatever you know one mana removal uh however incubation druid coupled with the great hinge is fantastic right um so it's eh. <clears throat> i'm really uh just sort of letting the twos ride and then we'll we'll figure it out and again if you have a preference by all means if you prefer paradise druid throw it to that i just don't think paradise druid is is necessarily the the most efficient in this deck so uh, Battalion Foot Soldier, we've already talked about. We're going to be able to get down 
you know, one of these and then get down the other three back into our hand, which is great for the Great Hinge, Thor Mammoth, Lumbering Battlement, all that good stuff. We have four copies of Nato Autumn, which is, again, great for all those creatures that just aforementioned, right, and including Charming Prince. Going to allow us to either build this up to a 4-3, which isn't bad. It does make Great Hinge only cost 5 mana. Uh, Going to be able to destroy target artifact or enchantment or gain 4 life, all of which are fantastic. We have 4 copies of Conclave Tribunal for some removal. Uh, Lumbering Battlement we've already been over. Tulsimir is another fantastic addition to this deck. You play him, you get 3 life, you get another 3-3 three, three creature with which you can attack with. Um, just immediately as soon as it enters the battlefield and then furthermore say you pick him up with lumbering battlement You don't want to pick up the token, but you still have another 3-3 three, three on the board So you're not just Leaving one creature in the lumbering battlement furthermore when your lumbering battlement does get removed Then you're gonna get a Tulsa Mirror to re-enter the battlefield get another 3-3 three, three, which can replace your other 3-3 three, three, or You know give you a 3-3 three, three back if it's been removed three extra life fights another creature You know, it's uh, it's nice. It's a really nice addition I do if I do say so myself round cloak giant this is for those games where people just build up bigger numbers than you can really deal with and then you're just gonna you know five mana destroy everything the great thing about this is ideally you'll have some cards you'll have some creatures tucked into your lumbering battlement so when you do destroy everything including your own lumbering battlement you're not really wiping your entire side of the board as you're getting your creatures back from lumbering battlement so really really awesome uh effect there and it's it's not necessarily a lose-lose for you and your opponent you sort of you get something back ideally by the time you're casting that so thorn mammoth whenever thorn mammoth or another creature enters battlefield under your control thorn mammoth fights up to one target creature you don't control now obviously this is good for all the creatures that i've mentioned previously in the deck and then last but not least we have the great hinge which you know we're playing a very enter the battlefield kind of deck sort of rampish this it, it literally just fits in perfectly so that's going to do it for the deck tech or deck breakdown, everybody. And now we're going to go and hop right into our matches. Songaria, going to be our first foe for the day, rocking the Kaya avatar. I like it. Ooh, and I like this hand. We get to go first. I will keep. That's a four mana that can go there. And we'll lead with our Temple Garden. So Now, early game, like I said, <clears throat> excuse me. Early game, like I said, I do prefer the Leafkin. So that is going to be the one that we play here. Just because it's harder to just shock him out, right? <clears throat> Guild Mage's form in a Boros deck. That's very interesting. Um, I guess we can go for the full-blown ramp, but if they play something like a Deafening Clarion, then we're in a bit of trouble, so... <clears throat> it's, a, it's a bit of a, a catch here, but I, I think I will go ahead and go for the ramp. And we can go ahead and tap this out. Um, we have the double green available for Tulsimir. Yeah, I think I'll go ahead and get a white. Just that way we're, we're fine as far as uh, mana goes. Alright, so on our next turn we'll have plenty of mana of which to cast Tulsimir if we want. Charming Prince if we want. And again, maybe I haven't, uh, shouldn't have committed so much to the board. Because say they're playing a control deck. Say they're playing Deafening Clarion. All my shit's about to get wiped. Luckily, they're not. <laughs> Luckily, they are not. So, Tulsimir is going to be beautiful here. Going to allow us to kill that Sky Knight Vanguard, gain three life, two more creatures on the battlefield. We're, we're gearing up well for, for a lumbering battlement. I will say that. Gearing up very, very well. Heraldic Banner. I wonder what they're going to choose, white or red? Red. Okay, so this is more red-focused deck. More land. That's all right. Ba -dum, ba -dum. And if you want to play more Great Hinges, I, it's not a bad thing. We are going to go ahead and play our Charming Prince here, and we'll scry to see what we uh, see what we have. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. And Charming Prince being able to scry really does help out with... Yeah, see, we don't want those. We, we have plenty of ramp on the board. We don't need these lands. Let's just put them both to the bottom. And hopefully that'll keep us from getting... I'm going to keep the Leafkin back. We don't need the ramp or any of that. And we'll go next to combat. Swing in with these two. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we have enough to adapt the Incubation Druid as well. I don't want to use my food token quite yet. But we will adapt the Incubation Druid come, come our opponent's turn. 
we're gonna wait and see if they try to remove it in some way, form, or fashion, and then we can we can adapt it. So another heraldic banner. Is this gonna come down for white? If so, that's very interesting. No red as well. Legion war boss. That's interesting. That's very interesting. So they have four two war boss. <clears throat> All right, so they swing in with that. We pass and we defend with the incubation druid, and then we adapt. There we go. Gets rid of that gobbo, and we don't lose anything. That's the way I like to play. Now we're just gonna conclave tribunal, take their legion war boss, and keep them keep them hurting. Right? We're gonna keep on dealing damage. And actually, they're just gonna scoop it out. Songaria. They didn't even get to our main course. They didn't even didn't even make it to the lumbering battlement. Well, it's a bit of a shame, but it does. It does show a testament to how strong this deck is, even without its main course meal. So, all that being said, now the way we're gonna move on to a game two. Kieran, gonna be our second foe for the day. All right, sure, sure, good. Now walk forward. We may go ahead and use our Fable Passage on turn one to guarantee we can hit that turn three, not of autumn. Or rather, adapt the Growth Chamber Guardian. That works as well. So, I think our deck is definitely more green based as far as requirements, right? Because Tulsa Mirror and the Great Hinge. 10 Street Dodger. It's going to be mono red, everybody. Get ready for some shocking. We're gonna play the Gilded Goose because you pretty much know, pretty much guaranteed they have a shock. Or you should at least assume. And so I'd rather the Gilded Goose get the shock. Go ahead. There we go. Faithful dumbass mono red. Alrighty. Not that I'm salty at him. I'm gonna go ahead and gain life here, I think. Just, just ease my troubles a little bit. We also have Tulsa Mirror, which is going to gain you some more life. So, <clears throat> actually, decently equipped to deal with these, uh, these kind of decks. Bone Crusher Giant. Cool, cool, cool. I'd like for them to play the Bone Crusher Giant, so I can use Tulsa Mirror's Wolf to kill the Bone Crusher Giant. But <clears throat> it is what it is. I won't complain. I suppose. I do suppose. So we can play the growth chamber here and have the two mana for the, the food afterwards. So that's good. One more mana, we'll be able to get down to Holtzamir slash Lumbering Battlement. Lumbering Battlement will be a pretty good creature up against Mono Red as it can't just get shocked out. If our growth chamber just gets lava cooled, that would be so unfortunate. Alright, it's okay. It's okay because we can still do this. Why don't I just go ahead and do this? This is guaranteed what we're doing, right? It's mono red. I definitely want the life. Italian foot soldier. Well, it's not terrible. It it certainly sets us up well for our lumbering battlement. You know, it can take out some of the removal. So yeah, I, I'm okay with that draw. I would love a land. Don't get me wrong. But if I'm not gonna hit a land, battalion foot soldier, it's all right. It is all right. So what uh, what you got up your sleeve now, Kieran? Some more shocks? Lava cools. Well, at least they're not taking out our Tulsa here. I guess there's that. We are still taking damage to the face. Four damage now, to be exact. Doesn't feel great. I'm going to go ahead and tell you all that. Ooh, Incubation Druid. Do I play it and hope that they don't have any more removal? Yes. Yes. Yes, I do. Oh, they have more removal. They have a shock, don't they? These filthy bastards. No, no, no. They would have played it there. If they had it, they would have played it there. For sure. For sure. I guess it doesn't really matter here what we block. But we have to block. Have to. Another Rimrock Knight. Yeah, we're getting too low to not block. Although that could have been our Tulsum here, so maybe maybe not blocking was the answer there. I don't know. I go back and forth. Honestly, if we could hit another land, I have 24 in the fucking deck. Getting stuck on four is not a good feeling at all. Gotta say. 
One more mana, please, magic. Alrighty. We'll block the Rimrock Knight as it is the biggest threat to us currently. We're down to seven. We really could use that Tulsimir. Or another Knot of Autumn. That would be fine as well. Growth Chamber Guardian. Or land. <laughs> Fuck. Um yeah, this is so awkward when you just you just don't get a land for a while. Um yeah, damn. I guess it all came down to that Incubation Druid. Had we not defended with that Incubation Druid, we would have been fine. Now, now we're just dead. <laughs> uh, it is what it is. Sometimes you win and sometimes you get mono red, you know? Actually, actually, take that back. If we could have not gotten screwed, because this is mono red, which I'm assuming doesn't play 24 lands. They could be playing 24 lands in the deck. Oh my god. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, game two, you know, sometimes you have it, sometimes you don't. It all came down to the Incubation Druid play, and, uh, well, I messed up, so we'll we'll keep that in mind for next time. If it's not gonna kill us with Mono Red, keep it. Just just keep the keep the mana for the health and the more creatures. Because if we could have even gotten down the Lumbering Battlements, right, those are four fobs, even if they don't take anything with Vigilance, that's enough to have not gotten Lava Cool to defend, you know, uh... So that, that was our mistake there, and that's okay. We realize it, we move forward. On into a game three. Fafne, Fafne, Fa I don't know. <laughs> Next foe. Uh, sure. I do love me some, some Tulsimir, so I guess. Even though we can't really get the goose down turn one, which is a bit unfortunate. It is what it is. Sure. We'll lead with the casting Castle Garen Brig. Our opponent's playing Knights. Okay. Aggro Knights. Oh my goodness, and we're only gonna draw Tulsimir. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Game. Um por favor, give me something else. <clears throat> Judith. Ooh, they're playing like a, a Rakdos Judith deck. That's interesting. Very strong. Very strong indeed. I don't think we're going to get to where we need to be by the time it's time to start doing stuff. You know what I mean? Anyways, we'll try. Conclave Tribunal. We're going to be taking the Judith for sure. Once we can get these Tulsimir downs, I guess we can just play them all back to back. <laughs> Shit. Taking a lot of early damage, but that's okay as long as we can curve it out. We do have the Gilded Goose, which is a a generator for uh, for health. All right, so Tulsimir, bada bing, bada boom, three life. To us, we do want to kill the Order of Midnight's flying. It's harder to kill. Let's see if they have some removal for my Tulsimir. Uh, sort of. They removed the wolf, which I guess is, you know, something. But we're going to be putting down another wolf on our next turn anyway, so... Murderous Rider. Well, on the bright side, they're almost out of cards, right? I mean, sure, they're still top decking, but... Play Murderous Rider, play Rimrock. Swinging with Fervent. <clears throat> but then come my turn. Come, come, cometh my turn. Comes another Tulsimir. And guess what? Next turn, another Tulsimir. So long as we can uh, keep it up, uh, I will. We'll keep on keeping on. And at least we're, we're gaining some mana. We have a Lumbering Battlement. So this could be good. Steel Claw Lance. Where do y'all think that's going? Fervent Champion. How much does it give him? Plus two. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, we could double block into this. Yeah. Sure. Alrighty. Like this. Um, get down some green mana for sure. We have a whole lot of white. 
Not so much green. So there's a forest for us. A forest for us. <laughs> Anyways, um, okay, so the, the correct thing to do here then is to swing in with the token, right? Then play the Tulsa Mirror. There we go. So, we're, we're still at 12 health. We still have a Goose, which can give us more health. We have a Lumbering Battlement, which is a solid body, if nothing else. And we have a Charming Prince to re-enter our Tulsa Mirror and get that 3-3 Wolf back down, so... All in all, it's fine. We're gonna take that three damage, no problemo. Because again, we're, we're gonna heal it back with our Charming Prince right here. And I'm actually gonna wait to play the Lumbering Battlement for next turn. I know we can play it this turn, but we're gonna wait. We are going to wait. Oh, I fucked up. Attack, then Charming Prince. So I messed up there. Huge, huge actually, because that's three damage, you know? That's not... It's not a, a little number. That is three whole damage. Well, that is unfortunate. But we do get to remove the Fervent Champion. So that's all that really matters in the end. What, you're wondering how it didn't first strike? Well, you see, it just fought it. it. Wasn't attacking. Your creature wasn't attacking, so it didn't have the first strike. Order of Midnight to get back a Fervent Champion, which they can't even cast down. Can't even cast it down. So, yeah, they could they they could be down to 12 health. That is that is my bad. Oh, there's the fervent. They're not gonna swing in though. Why would you put steel claw lance on that? They're probably gonna switch it over to the fervent. Yeah, yeah. And we're gonna take the three, and then we're gonna heal the three. Or I guess we we can just heal the three, and then whatever you know. No blocks. No blockades. Ooh, another Lumbering Battlement. So here's something really cool we can do. Lumbering Battlement. Take these. Do I want to take the Gilded Goose? No, because we can create a food this turn, and that's that's good. So take these two. Lumbering Battlement is going to go up to an 8-9. And uh, no attacks. In turn. The Fervent Champion can't get through that. Even even if they get a, a fucking uh, Ember Cleave, right? Oh, they could have a Murderous Rider, though. But even if they do, we get Tulsimir back down, and we get the Charming Prince. So it's not its not even that bad if they remove our Lumbering Battlement, right? Oh, they're going to do it. All right. Well, fine by me. We'll get these two back down. We do want it to go in this order, so... We're going to exile you, but that won't take into effect until after we get the Tulsimir effect for the first time. So we're going to use you to kill you... Then we're going to exile Tulsimir. Then come... Oh, wait, wait, is it our instep? Turn it to the battle phone under your control at the beginning of the next instep. Okay, so come their instep, we get the Tulsimir back down, we'll kill the murderous rider. Right? No, it's a 4-5 now. We can't. Well, still, we'll get the Tulsimir back, we'll kill the Order of Midnight. <laughs> no blocks. We're just going to create a food token with you, actually. <sighs> it's it's complicated, but it's working, right? It's working. And that's all that really matters, so. Well, get get Tulsimir out of my face! <laughs> oh, Endraze! Well, we could just play Endraze outright here, or we could go for a lumbering battlement into an Endraze, and everyone knows. Oh, well, actually, if we Endraze here, then we can lumbering battlement and take everything back up after we Endraze. Yeah, I like that. Because then whenever our Lumbering Battlement gets removed, or we remove it ourselves, then we get all, you know, we get the end rays back down. So this is fantastic. Oh, I love this. Shouldn't have swung in with the Charming Prince. That's okay. We're going to lose a creature here. They're going to gain some life. But is it enough? I didn't even do the math, you know? Because math, math is for defenders, not for winners, not for cheaters. Oh, yes, the sweet victory. But y'all do understand Lumbering Battlement will just scooped up the End Rays, Tulsimir, Charming Prince, and then whenever it gets removed, you get all those creatures back down. Anyways, that's going to do it for our very interesting deck today. Uh, you know, 1-1, one, one, lost 1-1, one, one, one. you know, what, what else is there to say? 
Uh, it was a fun deck. I will certainly be uh, testing it out some more and adjusting the cards that are in it. Because again, that top end, I feel like it could use some work. Although it may need the work of cards that I don't have, you know? Like another Realm Cloak Giant would do fantastic in the deck. Um, Finale of Devastation, I do have that card. I think that would do all right in the deck, but I don't know where I would make the cut. So thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe if you're new here. As I said, I do try to put up a video daily. Sometimes, you know, I take a break or whatever. We are human beings and that is how it goes. So all that being said, peace.